What's up everybody? Welcome back to Out of the Basement. Nate here today and we're bringing you a brand new action figure news video. Toy Fair 2020 just wrapped up this weekend so today I'm going to be going over the McFarlane Toys announcements, some Marvel Legends, and the Mezco 112th new announcements. For the sake of making this video not super long, I'm not really going to talk about stuff that was previously announced uh, for instance, like Mezco really didn't show off a lot of brand new product, but we did get a couple new things, a couple surprises as well, and I'll sort of touch on those. And I'm not going to go over every Marvel Legend as well, just because there were so many released, but I'm going to hit on the ones that I am really excited about. Same thing with McFarland as well. I'm pretty much just going to cherry pick a lot of the stuff that I'm personally interested in. And if you haven't checked out J-Rick's video about all of the new Star Wars announcements, definitely do that. I'll leave a link right up here so you can check it out. And we're probably going to save the NECA stuff for a video that we will do together. But I know J-Rick doesn't care about a lot of this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Of course, I'm pulling all of my information off of the Fwoosh's website. Great website for all toy news and the like. So we're going to start with the Mezco 112th line. Of course, you guys know that every once in a while I pick up a Mezco figure. So I usually follow them pretty closely to see what is going on. And this year, right before Toy Fair, they actually teased a Predator figure, which got me pretty excited. Although once I saw the prototype, that excitement pretty much went right out of the door. Mezco has confirmed on their social media that this is a very early prototype. But as you can see, looking at the photo I have posted on screen right here, it's not looking great. I think the head is way too big. The awkward stance that they have him in just doesn't really do much for me. Um, also, I don't know if this picture is real or not, but this is allegedly a posting of what Predator is going to come with. And you can see from that photo that looks like he's only gonna have the plasma cannon, a skull, his little sash things, and a couple extra hands as as well as a removable mask. And that is really disappointing for a Mezco release. It's way too light on accessories and trying to step into a realm where NECA completely dominates the game. I don't think anyone can deny that no one has ever done Predator better than NECA. It's just not looking great, honestly. I'm pretty disappointed. I was actually kind of excited when they posted the teaser image but seeing the actual prototype and then seeing the alleged accessories has really bummed me out considering Mezco's are usually 80 to $100. And yeah, that's just pretty disappointing. There's no blast effects. Maybe we could have actually gotten an alternate head that the eyes light up in. But yeah, it's just really light on accessories. And when you compare the NECA Jungle Hunter, which comes with a ton of accessories and is only usually around $30, this one is definitely looking like an easy pass. Next up for Mezco though, something that did surprise me is an original Dr. Zaius from Planet of the Apes. And this figure actually looks really good. Now, as far as I've seen, there's no real confirmation of what Dr. Zaius is coming with, but the prototype shown off is just looking really nice. I love classic Planet of the Apes. Again, NECA did these figures a while back and those were pretty good as well. But you can see that Dr. Zaius is in his classic outfit and he has his cane and he looks really good so far. I think the cloth goods look nice and they sort of wear how they were baggy like in the original film. And then jumping back, they actually unveiled a alien xenomorph. Uh, I'm assuming this is Big Chap. The stand only says alien. It looks like the Big Chap design. And it also appears to be on Mezco's new seamless body, which the xenomorph actually looks really nice. Of course, again, we haven't seen what he's actually going to come with, and it is just a prototype. But from what I can see, the details are looking great. Although, again, they're going to have to go head to head with NECA, who is re-releasing the Big Chap later this year. And that figure also looks incredible. Uh, one thing I did notice on the Mezco Big Chap, though, is how clear the dome is. I hope that when this is unveiled that they will include an extra dome that is more of the uh, white tint that is actually in the film. And my preferred look of Big Chap is with the white dome. 
So hopefully, maybe they'll include some alternate domes. I don't really know what else they could include with accessories other than your typical face hugger, chest burster, egg kind of deal. But I'd be curious to see what they're going to pack in with the big chap. And then that's really it for Mezco in terms of new stuff. I'm pretty sure everything else has been shown off at a convention or at some other time. Of course, we got good looks at the prototype of Thanos, which doesn't look that great in my opinion. Also stuff like Mr. Freeze, which looks awesome. Two-Face looks awesome. Really digging all the bat villain stuff that they are bringing to the line. Will I pick it all up? Of course not, because uh, then I'd be flat out broke. But I think I will definitely try and get my hands on a Two-Face. That one looks like it's going to be a little bit too good to resist. And then moving on to some Hasbro stuff, we've got something that was a rumor for a long time, pretty much since the dawn of 6-inch action figures. And we are finally getting 6-inch G.I. Joes from Hasbro. This is going to be called the G.I. Joe Classified Series, and the first wave is going to be Duke, Roadblock, and Scarlet, who all don't really look that great. Of course, I'm neglecting to mention Snake Eyes, which absolutely looks fantastic. I'm not a huge G.I. Joe guy, but I did grow up playing with the hand-me-down toys from my older cousins and such, so I'm familiar with it, and it does have a little nice nostalgic tinge to it for me. Duke, he's just looking a little plain Jane. I mean, Duke always kind of has a plain Jane look to him, but it's just not really doing it for me. It looks really plasticky, really cartoony, which I mean, obviously it's based on a cartoon, but when you compare how Snake Eyes looks from the classified series to how Duke looks and Roadblock and Scarlet, they all don't look like they're from the same series. So I'm a little disappointed in those three, but Snake Eyes does look incredible and he is available for pre-order on Hasbro Pulse. And that one includes a ton of accessories and I believe it is exclusive to the website. Personally, I'm going to wait for the standard release of Snake Eyes because I really don't know what I would do with all of those accessories. I feel like I'd just put them on the stand and then forget about them. And I don't want to do that. So I think I'm going to wait for the standard release, but that one is $40 on the Hasbro Pulse website. So yeah, that's really awesome for all you G.I. Joe fans out there. We're finally getting a six inch line and at least Snake Eyes looks really good. You got one out of four. And then moving on to Marvel Legends, which I know we have our infamous video on the channel where we all talk about not collecting Marvel Legends anymore. But since then, I have slipped back in just a little bit. Very select cherry picking on my end. But Hasbro announced something that I've been wanting for a really long time. And we are finally going to get Marvel Legends based on the Fox X-Men movies. So, of course, the original X-Men movies the newer trilogy, the first class trilogy, and Deadpool. So that is honestly really cool and a big surprise, something that I did not expect we would see coming from Hasbro, especially because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would assume that we're gonna see an X-Men reboot sooner than later. So then just now coming out with figures based on characters and actors that aren't going to play these characters anymore does seem strange, but at the same time, very iconic stuff and I absolutely love the original two X-Men movies. Deadpool 1 is pretty good. Deadpool 2 not so much. And of course Days of Future Past, First Class, those movies are also really nice as well. So starting off we're going to get a Deadpool 2 wave which includes a normal movie looking Deadpool which does look really nice. Looks like he's going to have double elbows. Hopefully he'll have some butterfly joints so you can really get some good posing in there. But I think they really nailed it with the overall design. We're also going to get a Domino, which is cool for fans of Domino in Deadpool 2. Negasonic Teenage Warhead from Deadpool 2 as well. Kind of would have preferred to get her Deadpool 1 look, but whatever. I'm probably going to be skipping all of these figures anyways, but I just wanted to lump them in to talk about the figures that I probably will be picking up. And then we're also getting a movie Josh Brolin Cable, which does look like a really great figure. I might pick it up. I'm pretty sure it's an exclusive. I can't remember off the top of my head to where, uh, but they all look great though. These figures absolutely look fantastic and it's really awesome for fans of the Deadpool 1 and 2 to finally get their hands on some six inch action figures. And then what I'm really excited about is we are finally getting Hugh Jackman Wolverine in the Marvel Legends series. We're gonna be getting a jacket look, sort of reminiscent to his casual look. 
uh, in X-Men Origins Wolverine. And then we're also going to be getting an exclusive tank top version of Wolverine. With the tank top variant being an Amazon exclusive that is available for pre-order right now. I'm not sure if those pre-orders have sold out yet or not. But man, these Wolverine figures are looking great. The head sculpts absolutely nail Hugh Jackman's likeness in six inch form. Now, what I really want out of this is to get a look from the movie Logan. I would absolutely kill to have an older, gruffy Wolverine, Hugh Jackman style from that movie. That would be like my crown jewel, but these are also really nice options. Of course, I'd love to see him in the X1 suit as corny as that is it holds a special place in my heart but these figures are looking really nice the amazon exclusive comes with a set of bone claws as well which is pretty awesome and then we're also getting a days of future past magneto which comes with not only a michael fassbender head but also an ian mckellen head and the ian mckellen head looks incredible I wish we could get a more X1 style suit of Magneto because his Days of Future Past suit, I more so think of in my head as Michael Fassbender. Having that Ian McKellen head and just judging on how good it looks so far, I'm really excited to get that Magneto. Then same thing with Professor X. We're getting a James McAvoy and a Patrick Stewart head. But of course, this one is more of just a classic suited body. So it's not really i mean it is movie specific but you could fudge it if you really wanted to between the looks of patrick stewart and james mcavoy and then finally we are getting a rebecca romaine mystique which again is something so awesome love that they're diving into the x-men line collectors i feel like we've all been dying to get six inch scale fox marvel legends figures and i guess better late than never um and they all look great so far. They all have really nice photoreal paint applications. So they all look very similar to the actors and the suit designs and sculpt work all seem to be on point. So I can't wait to check these ones out. And these are all going to be coming out fall of this year. And like I said, the tank top Wolverine is available for pre-order. And then moving on, we're absolutely getting what I would consider to be a definitive war machine coming in the Marvel Legends line. This is the classic comic book design. Well, maybe not the classic, but the one I picture personally in my head anytime I think of War Machine. He's coming with tons of blast effects. He's got the Gatling gun mounted on his arm. He's going to have boost effects for his boots for the Gatling gun. And he's even going to include an alternate head. And this one is shaping up to look absolutely incredible. One of the few figures that I definitely will cherry pick considering I actually just picked up the 80th Iron Man and I really am digging that figure. And then another great Iron Man design coming from Iron Man 2020, which of course, why wouldn't you release some 2020 figures in the actual year? And this one is the Iron Man 2020 like i said uh this one's going to be a walgreens exclusive i believe pre-orders already went up and sold out but i'm sure they will restock it as time goes on usually walgreens exclusives are pretty easy to pick up but again this one just looks really nice really classic iron man design in my mind love the gears on the shoulders he's going to have the same blast off effects that are coming with war machine so again walgreens exclusive I probably won't pick this one up right away, but if I could catch it for a sale, I could definitely see it making its way into my collection. And then we're also getting a ton of X-Men Age of Apocalypse figures, which is awesome for the people who are into that comic book line. I'm not going to go in super duper detail on all of them, but I just wanted to have a brief mention of that. And then we're also getting a Spider-Man classic line, which is based on the old Toy Biz figures. It's going to come on the classic vintage card stuff. We're getting a brand new... 100% new body Spider-Man that just looks <sighs> so good. A lot of people are already saying goodbye pizza Spider-Man and I might honestly be joining that crew. He's a little bit bulkier, a little bit beefier, not quite so slim like the original pizza Spider-Man and the head sculpt is absolutely wonderful. We're also getting a regular Peter Parker, which has some very questionable um, glasses. They're not translucent. They're more of like just a gray over the eyes and it looks really goofy. It looks like he's wearing goggles more so than glasses. And he's also gonna come with that split Spider-Man face where it's half Spider-Man mask, half Peter, the spider sense. Um, 
look. But I think it's going to be a really nice body for some just street clothed characters. So you know that head's going to be able to get popped off. And you could put whatever Marvel Legend head you'd want to put on there. So in that regard, I think that's going to be really awesome. But again, don't really know what's going on with those glasses. And then we're also getting a Gwen Stacy. And she's going to come with an alternate Mary Jane head. So you get the best of both worlds. Of course, I probably would have preferred a solo Mary Jane. Either way, it's still cool that you get two options for the figures. And of course, the vintage card style is just so nostalgic to me growing up seeing those figures on the shelf and then seeing this new Hasbro version is really getting me excited. Although I'm probably, again, only gonna pick up the new Spider-Man. And that's pretty much all I wanted to mention for Marvel Legends. Again, tons of Marvel Legends were announced, so many. So many characters, I don't even have a clue who they are, but all the Marvel Legends collectors seem to be going crazy. They're loving what they're seeing, and that makes me happy as a collector to see other collectors get super stoked, and again, the Fox stuff I think looks awesome. We're getting Old Man Logan figures as well. So Marvel Legends is going to go insane this year. And I feel bad for anyone's wallet who collects 100% every single Marvel Legend. And then finally, right before Toy Fair, we got the long rumored, sort of leaked uh, McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat Spawn. Yes! Collectors rejoice. We're finally getting a brand new six inch well it's like 6.5 seven inch scale articulated spawn it's been over 10 years i believe since the one and only original super articulated spawn figure came out and since then that figure has soared up in value but thankfully this new spawn is looking awesome and like i was saying a couple days before the convention they released some badass promo pics of this new spawn he's gonna have the classic boot which yes Thank you, thank you for the boot. Iconic part of Spawn's costume. He's also gonna come with a sweet sword that I guess he uses in the game. Of course, he's gonna have a plastic cape, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I think it looks incredible. There's really nice sculpt work all throughout the figure. Of course, McFarlane always knocks it out of the park with their sculpting. And I personally am a fan of their new 22 point articulation scheme. It looks like he's gonna be on a similar thing he's gonna have the butterfly joints we've seen tons of people already messing with him i know unparalleled universe already put up a pseudo review just basically showing off the articulation and yeah this figure is just gonna absolutely kill it it's uh coming out very soon as well it's gonna be a timed walmart exclusive it's gonna have no pre-orders at all but it's dropping march 8th and that is seriously right around the corner. And then five days later, you can pick it up at your GameStop or your Amazon, wherever you'd like. So it's odd that it's only for five days, but this year at Toy Fair, I've noticed a pattern and that's Walmart exclusivity. And I really hope that means that Walmart's gonna step their freaking game up because their distribution of their exclusives in the past has been absolutely abysmal, easily the worst place to pick up exclusives. I personally have never even seen a majority of Walmart exclusives be that Worthy Cap or back in the day the Shock Trooper or the Mimbin Storm Trooper. Those are just the ones that are coming to my mind at the moment. I guarantee I'll never even see the Frank Miller Black Widow either. So I'm hoping that maybe this means Walmart's going to start taking their collectibles a little bit more seriously and uh, get a little bit better at distributing them. But yeah, the spawn just looks absolutely incredible. It's about time we got a new fully articulated spawn figure. And Todd, I know you're watching. Please give us a full seven inch line of fully articulated spawn figures. I'll buy every single one of them. Clown, Violator, Chapel, Redeemer, Angela, although you don't own the rights to that one anymore. <laughs> but please, overkill. Give us a full line of Spawn figures. I know I'm not the only collector out there that would be interested in a full line of fully articulated 7-inch Spawn figures. Speaking of Spawn figures, Todd also announced on their Instagram live stream that they're taking Spawn to Kickstarter. Well, not just Spawn, but a few other things, but they mainly showed off a new Spawn figure. Looks like they're going to be doing 
a sort of retro remake of the original Spawn figures from way back in the day. These are essentially going to be 100% updated sculpts. However, he did say that they're going to be in the same scale, so that means they're going to be around four or five inches, which is a little disappointing. And I believe I haven't been able to find the source of this information, but I believe I read that there will they will also include updated articulation. I don't know if it's the 22 points, but I certainly hope it's better than five POA because that just doesn't make sense anymore. But the prototype figure they showed off looks amazing. The sculpt work is absolutely incredible and the cape just looks wonderful. He also mentioned bringing back other older McFarlane lines such as Dragons and Tortured Souls and something I would be personally very excited to see these days, the return of the movie Maniacs. The original horror collectible line in my opinion, something that I always grew up with seeing and I've always had a very, very nostalgic feeling for the movie Maniacs. So that would be awesome if they could bring some back and I'd wonder how they just stack up against the NECA figure in 2020. So we'll have to see that stuff for the Kickstarter. Of course, now let's talk a little bit about their DC Multiverse stuff, which is something I've been reviewing on the channel, something that I've been personally enjoying despite a lot of people out there shitting all over them. I think a lot of collectors are forgetting already about how dog shit a lot of the Mattel figures were and it's breaking my heart because yeah there are issues with the new McFarlane DC stuff no doubt but they are nowhere near as bad as anything Mattel was doing in the last few years that they were in control of the license. So right off the bat something we got and that was actually leaked by some Walmart listings and that is the Arkham Asylum Batman and Joker and these figures look decent. I will say that they could look a lot better. Mainly both of the head sculpts I feel like are very off from the interpretation of the game. Batman's head looks a little too thin, a little too small. The expression of his face and how his mask looks sort of veed just doesn't really do much for me. But the from the neck down, I think the figure looks awesome and it would be nice to have a pretty good articulated version of the Arkham Asylum Batman. And then same thing with the Joker. I think the head sculpt is just way off, but from the neck down, again, looks absolutely incredible. And it'll be awesome to get a Joker that's super articulated like that. And I think they look good enough that I can, I can probably fudge it and live with it. Especially, I'm pretty sure that the older stuff that was released back in the day when the game was actually coming out is super expensive online now. And then we're also getting some Wonder Woman figures from Wonder Woman 1984. We're getting a classic looking Wonder Woman, which looks great. I think the Gal Gadot likeness is there. It's not great. It's probably not even good, but if you squint at it, you maybe look, you know, sideways, something like that. You can see Gal in there. Even so, it just looks like a really nice Wonder Woman figure with just some sort of likeness to Gal. Of course, it's supposed to be based on Gal, so it could be considered disappointing but for me i just see a pretty nice looking wonder woman figure the suit looks really nice and the articulation looks like it's going to be great as well and then we are also getting her giant golden chicken costume with the wings and the face sculpt actually looks a little bit better on this one has a little bit more likeness to gal but probably won't be picking up this figure at all but i do like nice shiny gold things and that's exactly what this is so i was like ooh, shiny and then we also got a nice look at the blue suit variants for the Detective Comics Batman and the animated series Batman. Of course, the animated series Batman, uh, that costume doesn't exist. That is 100% something that McFarlane Toys has made up, but it looks awesome. The blue, gray, yellow combination is always very striking. And the Detective Comics one looks absolutely incredible. And they're actually going to have different sculpt work. Well, at least the Action Comics one will because... The bat logo is completely different, although I don't think they revealed any details on how we're going to be able to pick these up. Hopefully they'll be just as easy to pick up as the normal releases, but I have heard rumors that they are going to be like case like chase style variants, which would be super disappointing if that's true. And then we're also getting some figures from a comic series that I'm unfamiliar with, and I believe this is called Batman White Knight. 
Uh, we're getting a super stylized Batman that looks awesome. He's got like a big frown on his face, which I just kind of find funny. But I do like the cowl. I like how the cape looks and the giant logo that goes like from shoulder to shoulder. We're also getting a new Joker from that series where he has like a bulletproof vest on. It's like a police vest and it's going to have an alternate like normal Joker head and then a sort of like before Joker's head where it's just like the regular skin tone. He has brown hair. Looks really cool. I have no idea what's going on with this figure at all, um, but I like it. I think it looks nice. And then also what I'm really excited about is this red version of Azrael, which just looks so damn good. If there's one thing that McFarlane always does great, it's like knights and characters with like tons of armor and detail and even the first two armored characters that they released in the line are probably the best figures in the line and i think this asriel is going to be among them again don't know why he's red asriel in my mind is usually white and red at least but i'm here for it it's going to have an awesome flaming sword and he looks like he's going to have tons of great sculpt work and all of these figures are coming out throughout 2020 through various channels i don't believe any of them are actually exclusives to one spot or another and then something that really surprised me is that mcfarlane has got a hold of the warhammer 40k license and they're bringing us a space marine super excited to see this figure the painted and unpainted sculpt they had on display looks absolutely incredible of course, I'm sure the articulation is going to be limited as hell because it's a giant bulky space marine costume, but it's just an iconic design, something that I grew up seeing. I've never actually played Warhammer the tabletop game, but I have been a fan of playing the video games, which obviously they're, I don't think they're really similar at all, but I'm familiar with the designs. I've always just wanted a classic space marine figure, and this one looks like it's gonna do that job. And it's in a seven inch scale line too. So it's gonna fit right in with your other McFarlane stuff. And that is just so freaking awesome. What a surprise that they got the 40K license. It's awesome that Warhammer is finally getting into the articulated figure game. I think it's been a long time coming, especially someone like me who I could not paint a miniature to save my life, but I've always just appreciated the designs. This is something just for me and I'm excited can't wait for that one to come out, although right now there are no details on it currently. So that is about it for the Hasbro, McFarlane, and Mezco stuff I wanted to share with you guys today. Of course, let's talk about these figures in the comments down below. What are you guys excited for? What was your favorite thing from Toy Fair? Again, J. Rick and I are probably going to make a dedicated video together about all of the NECA news. And then probably the rest of the Black Series stuff that was shown off. Although they didn't show off anything new, but we got some really nice photos of some upcoming figures. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this action figure news update. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. We're always doing action figure news and reviews videos on the channel. So if you're into that sort of thing, you're definitely going to want to keep it locked right here on Out of the Basement. I'm Nate. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.